This video is going to be a WordPress tutorial of how to create a landing page, meaning I'm going to show you exactly how to make a landing page in WordPress step by step by step using the number one best tool for building landing pages. I'm going to take you behind the scenes into my computer screen and show you the entire process step by step from the point where you don't have a landing page and have absolutely no idea what to do, how to connect things, what to do, what to click, what to point on up until the point where your page is online, ready to go. And people can actually come to your page and subscribe to your email list 24 seven on autopilot. Hey there, I'm Natalia from nataliaray.com. I own a digital marketing agency, and this channel is all about helping you master the digital skills that you need to help your business thrive online. Now, a little while ago, I actually posted this video right here of me showing you my template for a highly, highly converting email opt-in landing page. Email opt-in landing page is basically the page where you send people when you want them to subscribe to your email list, right? In a highly converting opt-in page, meaning that a high percentage of the people who come to this page actually end up opting in and become subscribers to your email list. Now, the reason why that is important is because statistics show that for every new subscriber that you get to your email list, you, your business will make an extra $1 every single month. And while that might not sound like a lot when I'm talking about one subscriber or $1, think about it this way. The second that you will be able to add 10,000 people to your email list, your business will be making a minimum of $10,000 every single month on repeat, right? That is the power of an email list. And that's why building a highly converting opt-in page, meaning again, a high uh, percentage of people who come to this page actually convert into email subscribers. That's why it's so important. Now, there are three different tools that you're going to need in order to make this whole thing work. The first tool that you're going to need is a free WordPress website installed on your servers already ready to go. I don't mind how you're going to do it. I have other videos on this channel showing you how to set up and how to get this page, this WordPress online ready to go. But do that and make sure that it's working. The second thing that you're going to need is an email autoresponder, right? Email autoresponder is the actual tool that we use in order to actually subscribe people to our email list and start emailing them every single day or every single week. I don't care which kind of tool you're going to use because either of them is going to work for this demonstration. The tool that I use and always recommend is called Active Campaign. You can check it out in attireway.com forward slash email. It's the best email tool around and it will allow you to actually build your business from zero all the way to seven figures without replacing your email autoresponder, which is a huge, huge deal. Now, the third thing that you're going to need is a website designer. WordPress coming straight out of the box does not allow you to actually design your website. It does not allow you to put any elements on your website. It's mostly there to make sure that your website is online and working properly at the back end, at the front end, in order to make sure that you can put like text and images and colors on your website to make sure that your website looks great on desktop and to make sure that your website looks great on mobile, you're going to need a design tool that's either a plugin or a theme. Now, the tool that I like to use and recommend for most of my clients is called Thrive Suite, which you can check out in attireway.com forward slash thrive. And it is by far the best tool there is for designing WordPress websites that are also converting. So with that being said, I'm going to get started on the build out. We're going to go through five different steps in order to make sure the entire thing actually works. So what you want to do right now is you're going to go to your website, open up your WordPress uh, back end interface, hit play on this video and pause the video as you go and complete the different steps that I'm telling you. Simply follow my lead step by step. So by the time this video ends, you will have your own landing page online working for you growing your email list 24 seven. So with that being said, I'm going to go dive into my computer and we begin. So let's begin with building and setting up our landing page. We're going to go through five different steps. And the first step will be to actually build the landing page, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into once you are on the back end of your WordPress, simply hover over the pages element in the menu bar on the left and click on add new. And what this will do is we will basically create a brand new page on your WordPress website. The first thing you want to do is to give that page a title, which I'm going to call an example landing page, not the most creative thing. And you want to change the link of the page so that this will be the link that you will send people to, right? I'm going to call this thing again, example, simply example, and I'm going to hit publish. Cool. The page has been published. And once I'm going to click preview on desktop, you're going to see that there is actually 
almost nothing on this page right now, but we're going to turn it into something in a second. So um, once you have your Thrive um, thingy installed, it's called Thrive Suite, and it has all sorts of different elements inside. The thing that actually builds the pages is called Thrive Architect, right? So once you're going to have that installed, you will have this big green button called Launch Thrive Architect. Click on it. And this will open up the exact same page on the back end using the Thrive um, interface, right? So what I'm going to choose here out of all the templates is I'm going to choose a completely blank page because we won't, we don't want to be confused by templates. I'm simply going to give you my template, which is highly, highly converting, right? And I have here the Thrive interface um, open. It's called again, the Thrive Architect, this specific tool within the Thrive Suite ecosystem. And I have my example landing page, which I'm going to be building. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to jump back and forth between those two pages and simply copy the elements one at a time. You can do the same thing for your particular business, your particular products, simply change the, the text and you're ready to go. So the first thing that I want to create is this top uh, section. It kind of has like this blue background with text on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the Thrive Architect back end. I'm going to check out the plus symbol on the right, which will allow me to add a new element. And I'm going to choose the background section. Now that I have the background section, I'm going to want to choose on the left here, the background style and color. And I want to see which kind of color is my page actually is. So I have a handy dandy plugin here called the color pick eyedropper. I'm going to click on it. And once I hover over the color in my original page, you can see the um, number of my color and I'm going to simply paste it into my brand new page. Awesome. Now, the second thing that I see, I'm going to close every other tab because it's confusing to me. Okay, awesome. Now, the second thing that I see on my example uh, page is that I have this line here called for the coaches looking to effectively elevate their coaching sessions. So I'm going to copy the text, add again a new element to my Thrive Architect back end and choose the element of text. I'm going to dra drag and drop it here. Hit Control A to choose the entire example text and paste my new text. Again, I'm going to mark the entire thing and make sure that it's centered. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do, if you notice the text here is black, is I'm going to, again, mark everything. And under main options, I'm going to choose the color to be white and hit apply. Now, as you can see, the entire row here is very, very thick. And the reason for that is because Thrive has a default settings of minimum height. So I'm going to go to main options as I'm standing on the background section um, element. And I'm going to take that down to zero. I'm going to hit save. And as I preview my page, you can see that already my first element is intact, exactly like my example. Now let's move on to the second element, which is the button here of free download. So I'm going to get back to my Thrive Architect editor, and I'm going to drop a new background section, which will be this entire thing, this white thing, right? And the next thing that I'm going to add is a button. And because I want to design it like that, I'm going to copy several things again. So again, I want to choose the color, which is the exact same color, by the way, just going to copy it here. And one of the things that you know, you need to know about Thrive is that on the right, you can add new elements, but on the left, as you stand on each element, this is what will allow you to actually edit the different elements. So now that I'm standing on my button, I want to change the background color. So I'm going to choose background, delete the color that's already there and replace it with my new color, right? I have it on the blue and the text needs to be free download. So I'm going to hit free download. Now, as you can see, all of this text is all caps. So as I'm standing on the text element, I'm going to go under main options and choose the caps. Cool. Now I want to know what exactly is the size of the text here. I don't know. So I have another handy dandy plugin called what font. And these are, by the way, all of them are free plugins. Um, that are suitable for the Chrome browser. So I'm simply going to click on that plugin. And once I do, I can click on my uh, button and see exactly what are the settings that I've used. So as, as you can see, I see that the size that I've used is 14 and the line height is 22. So I'm going to copy that here. 14 and line height will be on, in pixels 22. 
and already it's almost perfect. The next thing that I need to do is to actually make the button round and make it thinner. So the first, I'm gonna stand on my button, go to the left again to design the element and under borders and corners, I'm gonna choose the corner to be 50, cool. And under layout and position, I'm gonna change the height to be around six. Awesome. Already I have this part done. Now, as you can see, we have some space here between the button and the top row. So I'm gonna click on the background section and go to layout and position and add like a 45 pixel padding for this to actually look right. And as I preview the page, already you can see that the button is in place. Cool. Let's move on to the next section, which is this headline. I'm gonna copy the text, hit Control C, get back to my editor, and I'm gonna drop a new element of text right below the button. And this element is, I'm gonna copy, paste the, um, the words, <laughs> the copy, center it, and I'm gonna choose it to be a headline. Already you can see that it's kind of looking similar. Now the thing that I've noticed is that my current page is a bit wider than, than my example page. So I'm gonna change the settings of my width. I'm gonna stand on the background section, hit main options, and under inherit width from landing page, I'm actually gonna untick that and choose a different settings of 800 pixels, meaning the page will be 800 pixels wide, which just simply, the only reason why I'm doing this is because it looks better on desktop and it's easier to read, right? So that, we have that part done. Let's add the second headline, which is to elevate blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna copy this text, drop another text element, paste the text here, again, center it. Now, as you can see, the font here is bigger, so I'm gonna choose what font again to actually see what the size is. It's size 22, so I'm gonna mark everything and choose under main options, font size 22. Now, the last thing that you notice is that we have like this yellow highlighter here. So first of all, I'm gonna find out what color is it using my color picker. Stand on the color and copy the color code. Click the X to exit. Get back to my page, mark the aha moments, and under main options and highlight, I'm gonna choose my color, paste it, hit apply. And as you can see already, we have it here and the page is looking dangerously like the original one. Okay, now next. Next we have this section here, which has basically two columns because these are two elements, one's ne one next to the other with a bunch of stuff in them. So let's do it one at a time. The first thing that I wanna add here is I'm gonna drop a new element called columns and columns will basically allow you to add you got it columns to your page and the first thing that i'm going to add is this picture here so i'm going to drop a new element of image and drop it here and cool trick that i can actually show you is i don't need to save the image and stuff like that i, I can simply right click on the original image choose copy image address and here, as I add this new image to WordPress, as you recall, I drop the element, I'm gonna click on it, where it says insert image. I'm gonna choose inherit from URL, and you can basically insert any kind of image from any kind of website straight into here. Cool. So we have that, I'm gonna save my work, and already show you that my page is really coming together. Now the last part that I have is those elements here, which you can see we have some text, some bullets, and a button. So first things first, I'm gonna drop some text, and copy the text that I have here, simply control C and paste as plain text with control V. And then I have some bullets. So I'm gonna choose another element called list. And I like the, the element that says styled list because the other list says um, it will allow you to put numbered list. And I like the style because I like the icons. As you can see, the default are check marks. So first of all, I'm gonna copy the text and I'm gonna copy it one at a time. For you, it's gonna obviously be your own text with your own copy, the, the thing that really, really matches your audience and speaks to them. And as you can see, I also have this first bits of the sentences bolded. So I'm gonna bold them quickly by marking and hitting Control B, or you can also simply choose B here right above uh, with the, the little handy menu that appears whenever you uh, design or edit a text. Evoke deeper, cool, I'm gonna mark that. This time I'm gonna simply click the B. And the last one is grow your confidence. I'm gonna mark that, bold it. 
cool. Now, as you can see, the text here actually blue. So I'm gonna again, choose my color picker, hover over the blue, oops, hover over the blue, copy the color code. And what you wanna do is you wanna click on the icons and immediately the editing menu on the left will change to edit the icons and simply change the color to be blue. I'm gonna save, hit Control X exactly like a Word document. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that the spaces here between the fonts are smaller than in my example. So I'm gonna, again, choose my Watt font and see exactly what the height is. So the line height is 32 pixels. And line height is, again, the distance between two lines of text. So I'm gonna get back to this, mark either one of them because this will change everything together. Go to line height on the left, switch to pixels and choose 32. Save my work. And as you can see, already it's coming together, looking very, very similar to my original page. Now, the last thing that I wanna add here is the button, right? So I'm gonna, again, go back to my editor on the right, choose a new element. I'm gonna actually search for a button and drop it here. And the only thing left to do is to design this button for this step. So first let's copy the text, click to download now free. Click to download now, free. I think I have the first letter of each and every word actually um, capped. So I'm gonna choose under transform on the left, this thingy. I don't even know what it's called when every single letter on the first word is um, in caps, whatever. And now I'm gonna change the colors of the button. So as you can see, the button is actually yellow. So let's see what exactly color of yellow it is. I'm gonna copy the shade and choose under background, the new color. Apply, delete the previous one, and already my button is yellow. Now my text has to be black, right? Let's just make sure which kind of black it is by choosing my what font, because it shows me the color of the font as well. It's simply black, like 000 black. Mark all the text, and under color, simply choose black. Awesome. Now one more thing that I noticed is that the text here is bolded, so let's bold it. And what size was that? I don't even remember. So let me just leave it open. Um, it's 22 pixels and line height is also 22. So I'm gonna change 22. And also the line height will be 22 as well. And one thing you've noticed is that the button is round. So again, I'm gonna stand on the button, go to on the left to border and colors and corners and choose 50 to make it round. And the last thing that I've noticed is that this button has an icon on the right. So what you wanna do again, mark the button and on the left, go to main options and tick the add icon option and choose right. Now on the right, we have an icon. Let's just change the icon size and the actual drawing. So first of all, let's change the color to being black and let's change the icon to being an error. Cool. Again, if it's too fast for you, simply pause and do as I say. It's very, very simple. Now, the next thing that I've noticed is that, as you can see, like the, the width of the columns here is not exactly the same. It's not like 50-50, but on the right, it's a bit wider than on the left. So I'm gonna play with this a little bit by standing on my, uh, by hovering over the, the border between the two columns, I can actually drag and drop my columns to be thicker and thinner to either side. And one more thing that I've noticed is that I have a bigger space between those two columns. So I'm gonna actually stand on my column. You can actually stand on either element and here on the breadcrumbs at the tops to actually go all the way back to columns. And here you will be able to edit the entire column. So under main option, you will have gutter width, which is actually the difference between the columns. And I'm gonna make it 50 to make the space here bigger. Now, the last thing that you might notice Let's actually make the button here a bit closer, right? By changing the layout, I can even make it a bit closer. And the next thing that you might notice is, if I'm gonna give you a preview, you will notice, is that the column is actually very, very thin. Well, in my example, the column is actually a bit wider. Do you see like the image is bigger and stuff like that? So let's see if we can actually change it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate the entire thing. As you can see, I just stood on the back uh, background and hit copy. 
and I'm going on the first copy, on the original copy, I'm going to delete all of the columns that I created. And on the second one, delete everything that's above the columns. So basically, I just separated those two things into two different backgrounds. This is the first background and this is the second one. The reason why I'm doing that is because once I have this entire column layout and a new background, I can change the width. So I'm going to stand on my background. And you remember the first one, we changed it to 800. This one, because it has columns, I'm going to change it to 1080. Mm, maybe to 9. Yeah, I think 9 looks better. I'm going to save my work. And as you can see, as I preview my page, it already looks almost identical. The only thing that doesn't look identical to the, uh, to the original is the space here between those two parts. So I'm going to go back to my editor, hit on my background section where I see the big space, go to layout and positioning, and <clears throat> the 45 padding they added in the beginning, I'm going to simply change it to zero. And as you can see already, the pages look identical. Cool. This is the original and this is the new one. Cool. Now, the last thing that I want to do here is actually, by the way, quick note here, um, I can go ahead and try and work on the button more to make it better and prettier and stuff like that. Um, but this actually has some gradients and stuff that I, I just don't want to waste the time in this video, but you can make it prettier by simply playing with the colors. Um, I can make a whole video about that. I just don't want to waste time on this right now. Now, then this is what this was step number one. Now, the second step that we're going to need to do is to create a thank you page, because once someone actually opts in and subscribes to your email list, where are you going to send them to? Right. So what I'm going to do is once I have this page, I'm going to actually click on save and preview to actually close the whole thing. And then I'm going to go back to my WordPress uh, back end by um, hovering over the left here and clicking on dashboard. I'm going to open it in a new tab. Go back to my dashboard, go back to pages, all pages. And I'm going to, um, uh, what I want to do is actually rather than create a whole new page for the thank you page, I'm just going to duplicate the one that I have and change a few things in it because it's just going to be easier for me. So I'm going to find my page. Let me just find it real quick. There you go. So I think this is this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click clone and I'm going to clone the page. And right then and there, you will see that my page is cloned because as I hit preview, you will see that it's the exact same page simply with a different URL because it's cloned. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to change the title of the new page, so call it thank you page. And the th second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the URL actually makes sense with the first page. So if the first page URL is natario.com forward slash example, I want it to be natario.com forward slash example forward slash Thank you. So what the way that you do that is you're going to go to the back end under permalink here on the right. I'm going to change it to think dash you and under page attribution, I'm going to search for my original page example. And I'm going to update for you to see how the URL changes. So once I click update, you can see that the URL of the thank you page is already in atario.com forward slash example forward slash Thank you. So I'm going to preview this. You can see that it's again, the exact same page duplicated only with a different URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some uh, tiny adjustments to this page to turn it into a thank you page. So again, I'm going to go back to my back end and you can also simply hover over the edit with thrive architect and click on that. That can even be quicker. Close all the additional tabs that I have open. And I'm going to remove most of the stuff that we have here like this. And I'm going to change the title to thank you. Make the text um, have like a caps at the beginning of each and every uh, word. Thank you. And then I'm going to write, please head over to your email inbox to find the freebie, right? What ifs? Then I'm going to delete. So I actually want to delete all of this and simply to keep the image. So I'm going to stand on my image element and drag it right under the text. And all of those columns in the background here, I can simply delete it. Now let's change the size of the image. I'm going to stand on my image. Um, first of all, I'm going to go to layout and position to actually center my image. 
And then you can either change the size of it in under main option to simply work with this, or you can simply do it manually. You can see it's very, very comfy. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, I can simply also like delete the button here. And one cool trick that I want to show you is you can, you can actually add a timer to your thank you pages to basically encourage people to check their emails faster. This timer has no purpose other than um, giving the mental, um, the mental push that people need in order to check their emails faster. So I'm going to head over to elements on the right and search for evergreen countdown and drag the element right here below the subheadline. Choose either one of the designs. It doesn't really matter because you can edit the designs anyway. So I'm gonna choose this one and simply stand on my timer. And on the left, under settings, I can actually remove, put zero days, zero hours, and simply change the minutes to like, I don't know, 12 or maybe even five minutes. Five minutes, zero seconds, right? gonna save my work oh I actually don't want my days to even appear can I delete this I think yes when I hover over visible countdown titles I can actually remove days and simply keep hours and minutes I can even remove hours as well I'm gonna save my work and as I click preview you will see that this is the thank you page please head over to your email inbox to find the freebie and i already have like this timer telling me the clock is ticking go and check your email now there is no scarcity text there is no something that is going to lie to you and tell you the freebie will disappear and simply a timer that will make you go there faster that's the entire point this was step two now step number three will be to actually connect your email autoresponder to the opt-in page to make sure that every single person who will subscribe to your email list will actually go into your um, email opt-in um, email 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 autoresponder tool so the way that you're going to do that is that first I'm going to close down this page save and preview to close it down and again I'm going to hover over Natalia and right click on dashboard to go back to WordPress back end I always like to open things in new tabs so you're going to get used to uh, stuff appearing in new tabs uh, as you work with me on the left I'm going to hover over thrive dashboard and click thrive dashboard and under API connections, I'm under Thrive Dashboard. I scrolled a little bit down and I found my API connections. Click on Manage Connections. And right here, you will see that you will have options for all sorts of different things that you can connect. So um, you will obviously don't have Active Campaign already connected. So simply click on Add New Connection and choose your email marketing um, software, your tool out of the drag, drag and uh, drop down. You can even look for it. Um, the second tool that I recommend if you don't use Active Campaign is actually Aweber, which you can find in atireway.com forward slash Aweber. So you can choose Aweber. And once you do, simply click Connect. And from then on, Thrive will simply send you to your um, email tool. It will ask you to log in where you're logging username and password, and it will connect it for you automatically, right? I'm going to cancel this right now because I don't actually uh, use Aweber for this particular brand. Um, and that was step Three. So now that you have your email opt-in connected, and one quick thing that you want to make sure is that once your email autoresponder is connected, make sure that you have a list that you assign people to, right? So in my example, for example, it could be an entire main list on a tire lead magnet, an entire freebie. Choose your list. Make sure that you have an email autoresponder set up to actually go out whenever someone actually subscribes to this list. And now what we're going to do is we're going to connect this page to your email autoresponder. So here's how you do it. Um, one of the coolest things about this page you will notice is that you don't have anywhere here to actually put your email into. All you have is a button. And the reason for that is because if I'm gonna head over to my original page for a second and I'm gonna click on the button, you will see that we have a pop-up go on the page with the form where I can put my deep details and opt in. And the reason why I have this pop-up appearing um, and not have a form straight out of the gate appearing on the page is simply because it raises the conversion rate. There are a bunch of different psychological reasons why this happens, but take my word on the fact that it happens. So I want to set this thing up. How do I do that? Again, I'm going to go back to my WordPress backend and under the Thrive dashboard, I'm going to click on Thrive Leads. Now, if you don't have this Thrive Leads in your setup already, what you want to do is you're going to hover, go over to Product Management Manager 
which is something that will appear whenever Thrive is installed. Simply choose Thrive leads out of the list. Um, make sure you check mark it. For example, let's say that I'm gonna install Clever Widget, check mark it and click installed selected, uh, selected products. Thrive will do the work, it will install it. And once it will, you're gonna have it in the drop down list that you have here. So again, I'm gonna go, go to Thrive Dashboard, Thrive Leads. And the thing that I wanna create is a Thrive Box. This is what like this opt-in is actually called a Thrive Box because it's a box that pops out out of nowhere and basically allows you to opt in. So what you wanna do once you're actually in the Thrive Leads um, dashboard is to click on Add New, give it a name, a name, <laughs> and click add thrive box and as you do you will see a name has appeared here and I'm going to click edit and you're going to create that box just as if it was a regular page right you're going to click on create form test I'm going to give it a name create form and as I click on the edit pencil you will see that another interface exactly like the thrive architect will open up and will allow me to actually build that box from nothing exactly as if it was a regular landing page, right? So I'm just gonna quickly show you, you have all sorts of different templates that you can use straight out of the box um, to just make your job easier. So let's say that I'm gonna uh, choose a template here. Let's choose one that is awfully simple. Let's see which one, let's see that I'm gonna choose this one. Choose template. And as you can see, you have everything. All you need to do is change it and change like the text and ask, what do you have on my example landing page? Where to send your coaching questions. So I'm gonna copy that, paste it in here, et cetera, et cetera, and simply change the elements until you like what you see. So the important thing about this step is to actually, first of all, to connect it to your email um, autoresponder tool, and second of all, to tell uh, Thrive what is the thank you page URL, which we already created. So the way that we do that is we're gonna hover over uh, the lead generation element, and the first thing we're going to do is to click add connection. And as you click on it, all of the stuff that you already connected to your website through API will appear here. So let's say this for me, it's active campaign. I'm gonna choose active campaign. And as I do, um, Thrive will actually go into my active campaign and take out all of my lists and ask me, which of your lists will you like people to subscribe to once they are here? So I'm gonna give them, for example, um, NR lead, lead magnet list. Let's just say that I created one and click apply. And the second thing that you wanna define here is what is your um, thank you page URL. So I'm gonna go into my thank you page, copy the link, go back to my Thrive thingy and change the target URL here on the left to my thank you page URL. I'm gonna click save my work. And that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna go over the design of the thing because I already created an example just to save time on this video, right? So I'm gonna go back actually went ahead and prepared a form just to show you. So I'm going to click edit just to show you exactly how I did that. As I'm going to click edit design, I want you to see just how it looks like. That's it. That's the form that I actually pre-created. Um, I did all the things to edit it and make it look like the opting page they already have. And I named this Thrive Box test, right? So the last step in this entire thing is once you have your Thrive box actually created, you're gonna go back to your uh, landing page. Again, edit with Thrive Architect. And you're going to create that page, to connect that page to your Thrive box with only like one click. So I'm gonna go over to the landing page, to the editing section of the back end of the landing page. Click on my button. And I'm going to go down on the settings section and choose animation and action. And under animation and action, I'm gonna delete the default thing that I'm gonna have here and instead choose pop-ups. And as I choose pop-ups, I'm gonna have like a, a list of things to choose from show up. I'm gonna choose Thrive Box. And under Thrive Box, I'm gonna search for the Thrive Box that I created as example, right? So again, uh, as you, I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna click on the button, go on the left under animation and action, choose the pop-up section, choose open Thrive Leads Thrive Box, and search for the Thrive Box name. My Thrive Box name that I've pre-created was called Test. So I just typed text test here, it found it, and I'm gonna click Apply. Save my work, and I'm gonna click Preview. And as you can see, the second that I'm gonna click on the button, 
my pop-up will appear and already everything is connected. Now, the last thing that I'm going to show you before I go and show you how this whole thing works is I like to actually add this pop-up whenever someone clicks on any element on the page. So I'm going to add it to my image as well. I'm going to click on my image, go to animation in action and do the exact same thing. Click pop-ups, thrive box and choose test because that's the name of my thrive box and choose apply. Now I'm also going to do it for this uh, little button at the top. I'm going to click on it. Again, remove the default thing that Thrive adds, choose pop-ups, choose open Thrive, Lease, Thrive box, choose test and click apply. I'm going to save my work and show you that once everything is working, no matter what I click on, the Thrive box will appear. And the reason we do that is because so many people actually click on the image that I just want to use this for my benefit and actually get them to sign up the second that they click on it, right? Now let's do a test. I'm actually gonna remove it, show you that the page is live, everything is working, we're done with the five steps. Now let's just test it. I'm gonna click on the button or on anything, click test for my name, test at test.com for my email, and I'm gonna click the button, yes, send me the questions now. Thrive will think for a few seconds, and you're gonna see that the timer works perfectly, yes. And that's it. So that was a step-by-step -step WordPress tutorial of how to create a landing page or how to make a landing page in WordPress step-by-step -step with me. I hope this video has been helpful for you for understanding exactly what to do, what to click in order for your page to actually work. If anything is unclear, if anything left an open loop in your mind, please leave me a comment below with your question. I'm going to do my best to respond to it as quickly as I can. And other than that, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, do this now because I'm creating a lot of content to help you grow your business in this changing economy in this crazy amazing filled with opportunities online world and i hope that you will take advantage of the stuff that i'm giving you here completely for free i'm gonna see you on the next video until then yeah bye Oh, by the way, before you go, if you're now in the process of starting or growing your own online business and you kind of feel overwhelmed by the tech, you know, like exactly what tools you need to use for your website, what tools you need to use for your email list, et cetera, et cetera, I have just the thing for you. This is my little black book of business tools. And inside, I keep a full updated list of all the tools that I use in order to take my business from zero to $10,000 a month and now even more. And I'm gonna give it to you completely for free. Inside, you're gonna find exactly what do I use both for my business as well as my marketing clients' businesses when it comes to what kind of hosting do I use, what do I use to build my website, what do I use to design my website, um, how do I host and create online courses, how do I sell my products using sales funnels, and basically everything that you need to get organized, put your marketing and sales on autopilot, and build your business with practically no money because most of those tools are completely free. So if you're interested, simply go to natayaray.com forward slash black book and get immediate access to my black book of all of my online business tools completely for free. Now I'm going to see you in the next video. Until then, yalla bye.